What's up, guys? Welcome to a new YouTube video. Today, we're going to be talking about um, go uh, trends on Redbubble. How are they actually created? Guys, I got this question from somebody in the comments who watched one of the earlier videos, and he said, hey, I'm curious, uh, basically, how are trends created? Are Is it from people genuinely searching something, or is it just people, a bunch of designers creating a certain design, and that's how the trend is created? I'll let you guys know, we'll actually talk about this, and the reason why I know a lot about this is because I experienced this firsthand. Um, with that being said, I just want to go ahead and give a shout out to the DIY Income Tutorials channel. We uploaded a new video, it's literally almost an hour, 56 minutes, of me designing uh, stuff on um, Redbubble. Uh, so if you're interested, check out that channel. Check it out. It's fun. Um, it was a fun video. I think, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, if you guys do like the longer form content where it's like the back end stuff, like I said, back end in terms of business, not back end in terms of, you know, like YouTube or anything like that. Like I show you guys behind the scenes of me working. Uh, check it out. Okay, there's a new video, you can click on the actual channel, and you could see here that there's uh, one, two, three, five videos up so far. Obviously, the welcome doesn't really count, so it's really four videos, uh, but I like to make these videos because it shows the the things that I can't necessarily show on this YouTube channel, because it might be a little boring. This, this stuff is not for everybody, I'll say that. If you're looking for a quick, like, just tip vid, like, you know, quick style stuff, this is the channel, and this is not the channel for you. If you want to see click-by-click, step-by-step tutorials, go ahead and give it a, sh you know, a checkout, right? Um, something that I will say is a lot of the content here is print-on-demand right now, like designing, back-end stuff. Um, it, that's not going to be the only type of content we post. I know that's what we have right now, but in the future, we're going to do uh, website building. We're going to do uh, print-on-demand websites. We're going to create Shopify stores. We're going to do a whole lot, guys, and um, I'm actually going to create a Redbubble series series on here. I'm going to do lots of stuff. So if that's something that might interest you, check it out. Subscribe to the channel so that once I actually post, you get notified and so you know right away. Um, something I will say is if you go to the channel, when you subscribe, you want to hit the notification bell. Uh, sometimes when I subscribe, when I even, I try this on myself, when I subscribe to my own channel, I don't always get notified unless I'm actually hitting the notification bell, and even then, sometimes I don't get notified, so if that's something you want to know about, uh, I'm going to try to consistently post, you could see here, the last time we posted was two days ago, and then I posted today, and then before that was eight days ago, nine days ago, etc., so I'm going to try my best to post as much as possible, um, obviously I can't put it on a schedule yet, because I'm not there yet, I'm too busy with other things going on, but uh, if you want to check that out, uh, check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the the whole trend thing. So there are different ways trends are created. I've had this person, you know, first person experience where when I showed the Stoic store publicly, guys, and I said, "Hey, guys, this is going to be the demo store." Uh, by the way, I did change my mind later down the road on that store, and I'll explain everything in just a minute. But at one point, when I started making these Redbubble videos, I said, "Okay, I want to create a store where I could show everybody like certain things, so I don't have to risk my own store." And I had a premonition. I felt like whatever kind of content that I create on this specific store and the sales that I do get, I felt like that was going to affect uh, the sales of that store because I felt like there was going to be a lot of copycatters. And what happened was I was proven true. In the first week, I had nine stores, and I've counted this based on what I found. There are probably more out there. Uh, but based on what I found, not only nine stores, but just nine brands, uh, some on Instagram, some on you know, in, in, uh, on uh, Redbubble that have, uh, literally copied pixel for pixel or, uh, basically the whole entire style, basically jocked my style, uh, on the, uh, platforms, whether it be Instagram, whether it be, uh, you know, Redbubble, etc. That did frustrate, frustrate me just a little. Uh, obviously it wasn't a big deal because I thought it was a demo store, but then ever since I started to get, like, consistent sales on that store, I figured I can't leave this to be a demo store anymore. I got to take this store seriously in the future, and it will be one of the 10. So um, that will be a different conversation. But when I did expose that store, what happened after like a week or two, uh, people were starting to tell me, hey, your store is trending. And that was the truth. When you started to search for a keyword that was related to my store, there'd be a little trending symbol right next to it. Even the, the title of my store was trending. And there was the little trending, uh, like little arrow lightning bolt thing uh, was happening. So if you look here, 
you could see this little trending symbol that that was showing up next to my store and keywords associated with it. And it became clear to me that there are different ways a trend can be created. One of the simple trends could be created based on search demand. That is a very viable way that could be you know, a search, a trend could be created. Like, for example, somebody searches for a certain keyword, then another person, then another person, and so on. That hits just just goes rapid fire for whatever reason. It could be a trend through Google initially. It could be a trend through YouTube. It could be whatever it is. People search for that thing, and it becomes starting to trend. That's one idea, and and that's a very viable idea. Uh, then there are other trends that are artificially manufactured, and I'll explain why. There are certain softwares that are essentially behind-the-scenes kind of softwares people don't talk about when they use Redbubble. Whenever you're dealing with certain platforms like this, money-making platforms, you have people that are, I would say, the upper echelon. These are individuals, they don't share certain things publicly. They, I guess you could say, almost like a secret society of sorts. They don't share things publicly, they they stick to what they're doing, and they dominate the space. And you could find a few of these accounts, and I've actually shown one of these accounts here of that person doing over 9,000 designs, using certain tools, certain bots, certain apps, etc. And I've shown some of those things before. For example, the Redbubble Favorite Automator app, I, I've shown how that works, uh, I've described it, etc. Okay, so we've, we've passed that point already. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just literally go into my old videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay? And if you need a link, message me in the comments, I'll give you a link to check out. But anyways, there are certain tools that people don't talk about, even I don't even know about. Um, and these tools are effective, very effective. Now, some of those tools happen to be trend finders that find trends before they essentially emerge. Now, there's ways that there are indicators, there are certain things that you could do to f kind of verify, and you could do this manually. I haven't went over it yet um, in this YouTube channel. I don't know if I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'll do it publicly. If I do it, it might be something private or premium, um, but that's kind of a different conversation for a different day, uh, but there are certain things like this that do exist. Okay, and I'm just going to keep it at that. I don't want to say too much. But there are certain things like this that do exist. And what happened is, is these upper echelon, these, these cream of the crop type individuals, these tip of the top people, they're utilizing softwares like this that are essentially manufacturing trends. Okay, what happens is, is there's a community of customers on Redbubble that are loyal to Redbubble. And what they do is they look for things that are trending to purchase. They just do. They're just fans of the red of Redbubble. They're just you know fans, and anybody who owns a business knows about this kind of stuff. There are you have in different groups you have super fans. Super fans are the people that are going to be dedicated to your products no matter what. It's very very. I noticed this in the clothing world. Um, I haven't really noticed it in any really other business other than clothing as much. In clothing, it's very very pronounced. Any kind of physical item, clothing, hats, anything like that, accessories, it becomes very pronounced, even if it's not the best product. But it has to be visible. In this case, uh, usage for visibility or utilization for visibility is through the trending feature, right? What happens is, is these individuals cr essentially artificially create a trend. What they'll do is they'll figure out something that's consistently growing or get some consistent traffic. They'll go after that keyword and they'll dominate. They'll create 60 designs, 100 designs, 500 designs, whatever. Then what will happen is there'll be certain things that have to take place for the search demand to blow up, okay? Now, mind you, they've already done the discovery before the keyword blows up, okay? They find the keyword that essentially blows up, They bl and, and the keyword blows up, and I'm not going to say how they quote-unquote blow this keyword up, but it happens, and it's, I'm telling you it does happen, like I'm not even, you know, uh, but anyways, that's not the point, the point is, is that they blow this keyword up on the website, I'm not going to say the method how, that will, like I said, be pre something premium, it's probably not for everybody to see, uh, because if it gets patched, or if it gets changed, eh, it's not, you know, ideal, but anyways, um, the point is, is that it's, th they do this, okay, the keyword gets a ton of traffic, a ton of attention. Visitors on Redbubble come in hundreds of thousands, if not thousands, on a daily basis. 
the the attention brings to, essentially it's a random sample of individual of individuals going to a certain keyword going to a certain traffic and the reality is is when you're dealing with a random sample you're going to have about half a percent convert about half for them it's it's good enough if you imagine if you send a hundred thousand people to your store and you have a general store and you have all different kinds of products and you were to guarantee that these people would truly see your designs, you're going to get sales. You're, even if your designs are bad, you're still going to get some sales. You might get lower sales, but you're going to get some sales. Now, these individuals, they're not bad designers. They're skillful in every aspect of the game. They know exactly what they're doing. They're winners. Winners in all all expectation, all definition of the, you know, all facets of the definition, they're winners. And they know how to win in every part of the game, and they understand the game of Redbubble very well. It's just like chess. If you can understand the rules of the game, every aspect to the rules, and truly understand, I'm not saying memorize or anything like that, then you know where to make your moves. The point with the, all everything that I'm saying is, is that there are certain things that manipula, manipulate trends on Redbubble, and it's not as uh, always organic as it might seem. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are certain times that things are truly organic. So, for example, the Arcane trend. Let's go ahead and pull up Arcane here. You guys see Arcane? This is a movie series. Everybody knew about this trend. There was a series on TV, there was more demand on Google, more demand on Google Trends. Uh, you know, Google Trends reflected it. Um, there were more trend, uh, g demand on, on YouTube. Therefore, there will be more demand on Redbubble. It's just a microeconomy. Remember, I've talked about this before, but you have the big macroeconomy, which in this case is, or the search engine, which is Google. And Redbubble is just a reflection of a smaller version of it. Obviously, not to its nth point, meaning not to its, you know, perfection, but it's an example. It's an estimation, right? Also, a smaller example. It's almost like a micronized version. When you deal with something like this, it's not, um, it's, it's very obvious. It's not very hidden. Now, there are, like I said, certain trends that are, are unofficially made for certain purposes. Now, there are trends that are relatively, I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say like the process is 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 innocent behind them, but there are some innocent trends that kind of are created, and I'll explain what I mean by that. When trends are certain cr created on Redbubble, they happen for different reasons. One of those reasons are you know once again people are accessing. This is typically with the public softwares, not really the private stuff. The public softwares. There are certain softwares that you could find. That do cost a lot of money, but you, there are certain softwares that that you can utilize that will indicate uh, essentially search demand on a certain product um, or a certain keyword. Okay, and it's a mix of softwares, but let's just speak in layman's terms here. Okay, and what happens is is there's a lot of designers that will go and have access to these softwares and create tons and tons and tons of designs. Now they have certain tools. Uh, that are behind the scenes kind of stuff that can help them rank higher. Okay, let's just keep it at that. And I, I don't want to talk too much about that for obvious reasons. They can do this. And it's not completely white hat. Okay, let's just put it that way. Now what happens is, is they know what they're doing. They utilize these tools and they boost themselves up. And essentially through the process of quote unquote boosting themselves up, what they're really doing is pushing people down, but more importantly, they are increasing the search traffic, we'll say, okay? They're increasing demand. Let's just put it that way. Now, mind you, it's artificial demand, but what happens is, is the true demand, the true natural demand doesn't change. And and when I say the true natural demand, I'm talking about the consumers who have true buy intent doesn't change. That quantity typically doesn't change. And what happens is now they're ranked at the top using these black hat techniques. And um, they're essentially at the top of Redbubble uh, creating more sales for themselves organically. Now, is it quote unquote a trend? Yes and no. They they manufactured a trend. People like me and you will go on there thinking it's a trend and we'll create designs, but we won't show up at the top. Now, once again, this is a very rare situation. We're talking about 
probably less than a few hundred people do this on Redbubble as a platform, and there are over hundreds of thousands of creators. So let's just be clear on that. So this is not something that is publicly known. This is not something that is publicly discussed. And honestly, I don't want to talk about this anymore because it, because of how private this is. But this does happen. I'm not going to... I don't use it, first of all. I just want to say this. I don't use it. But I'm going to just leave it at that. Now, with that being said... There are people like this exist, and they're very smart, and they know what they're doing, uh, but they they set things up a certain way so that they can get certain levels of search traffic. Now, with that being said, just keep in mind that there are trends that are artificially made. There are trends that are not artificially made. What you really should pay attention to is not so much the trend, but really more the evergreen content. And don't get me wrong. I've made money on trends before, and, and I've done very, very well with them. But there's also a certain period of times where, you know, I've tried trends and they haven't worked out for me. I can tell you this, is that you're going to make more money focusing on an evergreen design because a trend is a gamble. If you don't hit the trend at the right time, you're probably not going to succeed on the trend. And, you know, chasing trends are a full-time job. This is why, like I said, certain softwares can pay three, four, five hundred dollars for certain softwares for Redbubble. And they're private behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, and once again, I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, if I do one day, it, it will be probably behind a premium paywall. Um, because like I said, it took me time to figure this stuff out. But with that being said, if you're going to focus on trends, play the game the right way and realize that you're doing a gamble every single time. You're essentially going double or nothing. And really what that means is that you're you can either get multiple multiple sales through a trend before that trend dies off or you're just not going to make a single sale. I always say go with the safer route. And that's why I don't even chase trends is because I want to create a product today and know that it could potentially sell next month, next week or even next year. But if I focus on a trend, how really successful can I be? Yes, I might make a few sales now, but that product will never make me money again, especially when that trend dies off. So it's it's an argument that a lot of people will disagree on. Some people will say trends are amazing, and that's what they do. And some people will say trends are terrible. Some people will say, hey, a hybrid of both. I'm all for a hybrid of both. What I'm not for, though, is sticking to one thing. And um, yes, I do love doing evergreen. Yes, I do love doing trends, but that's not my focus. My focus is really more evergreen. And like I said, if you guys watch this video that I created for the DIY, I was really working on some trends here. Uh, and you'll see, and you'll see kind of why it's, it's evergreen. It's a hybrid, really. You'll you'll see it. You'll see the video. Um, but hopefully, this video gave some experience around that, some knowledge around that. Um, and like I said, for certain reasons, I can't say everything about it, but. Uh, we'll just leave it where it is. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.